that needs to be fixed, that needs to be fixed, and that needs to be cleaned. Let's get started. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In last week's video, we made some really good progress with the no prep car. Saw some pretty impressive passes. We reached 55 miles an hour with the new DRK ESC. And I was pretty happy with the results for my first real dive into tuning this ESC. As you would have saw in that video though, we ran into a few problems, nothing too major, but we're gonna cover them today. The first thing was I couldn't get the car to leave straight consistently. And I think one of the major problems in that is the diff fluid. You can see I can take this tire here and turn it without this other one moving at all, which is what a diff is supposed to do. But I run a pretty heavy fluid in my diff. I run a 500K fluid and it's pretty thick and should not be able to turn this easily. I have a good bit of passes on this diff since I rebuilt it with this fluid. So I'm guessing it probably thinned out over time. It's time to change it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that today. The other thing is, you notice the wheelie bar stayed here, right? I had a 3D printed wheelie bar mount on here. I get a lot of questions about this wheelie bar. This is a custom made wheelie bar. I originally ran an RC Racing Innovations wheelie bar, but ended up going with this instead. And I can tune the height of it, adjust each side individually. I have a video on that, I'll link it here. But we still have to have a mount to mount it to the SC5M rear tower. Like I said, I originally went with a 3D printed mount and it works well. When it breaks like this, it's really easy to print another one. And that was my only option for a while. Luckily, I found something recently. Someone asked me about my wheelie bar and asked for a link to it. And when I went to find the link for the original wheelie bar, I ended up finding a mount. This company, R Designs, makes wheelie bar mounts for the B5M, the SC5M, the SC6, bunch of different chassis. And they're made out of aluminum some pretty nice pieces i'll get some close-up shots here it comes with the center section that's going to mount here the two side pieces i don't know if you remember my 3d printed mount but they mount here and here and all the hardware to get it mounted up and since my wheelie bar was designed to fit on the mount that my original rc racing innovations wheelie bar fit on it should bolt right up to this one as well so we're going to get that installed today we're going to change out that diff fluid clean the car up a little bit and I also want to talk about some upcoming videos. Looking through some of your suggestions in the comments on my past videos, I have a couple things I want to try and I want to talk about those a little bit. So I think we're going to start with the diff today. It'll be easier to get to the diff without that wheelie bar on. Not necessarily that the wheelie bar gets in the way, but it'll just be easier with nothing back there to get to the diff and then we'll worry about this. I'm going to pull this out right quick. Change that fluid out quickly, shouldn't take too long and we'll get to mounting that wheelie bar on. So with that out of the way and the transmission back in the car, you've seen me do this a hundred times, so I don't need to cover that again. We're gonna move on to the wheelie bar now. Like I said, these parts look really nice. They're nice aluminum pieces, finished in black. Should be a lot stronger than the 3D printed part, obviously, and look good back there. I'm not really sure how to put it together, and there was no instruction manual. So I'm gonna look at the pictures online and try to walk you through putting this together while I do it. 
So it really wasn't bad to figure out. You can see I have one side here, it's actually adjustable. We're gonna slap on the other side, and I'll show you how. From what I could see in the pictures, this slot here, the shorter side goes up, or the longer side goes down. I'm gonna take these cap screws here. I'm using a little bit of Loctite, run it through there. There's a machine spacer. It's gonna go in there and then it threads right in to the mount right there. Just gonna run it in a little bit. Not all the way. Right there, we still have some adjustment up and down and we'll do the other one now as well. So obviously we're gonna want these at the same height. I'm gonna adjust that once I get the wheelie bar on the car. To do that, we have to pull the old mount off of the car, slap this one on, then we'll run some screws in there to get this wheelie bar mounted, and then we'll do some adjusting to get it all set. As I'm sure you've noticed at this point, there's still a good bit of hardware included. I'm assuming those are used to mount it up to the frame. We have some countersunk screws. They look like they should run through the frame here, through the mount and into what is my rear body mount. And then we also have some more of these cap screws. They look like they mount down here. These will screw into an aluminum piece. So I'm gonna use some more Loctite on there. So we got it all mounted up. I took the wheels and tires off just cause it makes it easier to adjust things back here. For now, since my wheelie bar is adjustable, I took the side plates and ran them all the way to the bottom, cinched them up. Hopefully they don't move at all. Now I just need to bolt up my wheelie bar. These side pieces are threaded and luckily I can use my same screws that I originally used here. Just a tad Loctite again and run them in there. With the wheelie bar mounted, I do have adjustment in my wheelie bar, which is great. I don't really have to mess with these much, but when I go to slap the tire on there, you can see that I don't have a whole lot more higher adjustment on my wheelie bar. And it's already touching the ground. I don't really have much suspension travel here at all. So I'm gonna loosen these two screws up on each side, and just slide it up just a tad, and then I'll be able to use my adjustment so just the height of my wheelie bar. Well, I ended up doing a whole lot more than just sliding those plates up. I actually ended up having to flip them around, put the longer section up top and the shorter section on the bottom. That way I have a little more adjustment in there and I can get the plates up higher, bringing the wheelie bar up higher and then I can just adjust them with my linkages here. Got the tires back on the car and now I'm happy with where that sits shouldn't come up too high and i have a little more adjustment in here to play around with and with that we're ready to head back out and do some more testing i've been reading a bunch of your comments and wanted to go over a couple of things that some of y'all have mentioned that i want to cover in some videos soon a big one i keep seeing is cleaning tires in between passes i don't like using any prep at all on the tires but i do think cleaning could help me out a lot i've read a lot about just using plain old simple green wiping down the tires and cleaning them in between passes. So I believe I'll be doing that next time out and we'll make sure to cover that in depth. I'm not sure how I can do it just yet, but I'd like to be able to point out the differences between cleaning and unclean tires. Maybe make a couple of passes like I normally do without cleaning and then clean the tires after every single pass and show the difference and go back to not cleaning after and see if there's still a difference. We'll figure that out once we're out there. Another thing I saw mentioned a couple of times is getting rid of a battery connector and going straight to the post on the battery. These XT90 connectors can take a whole lot of current. I think they're actually kind of overkill for a 10th scale vehicle, but I know these cars are pulling a whole lot of power. It's something I want to look into, but I don't want to just throw it in there and go with that. I kind of want to look at why that would work better and actually show it. I think I'm gonna get some leads on order with the bullets for my batteries. And I have an idea for a video to test that theory and really go in and show the science, if you will, behind if that would be better or if these XT90 connectors are more than capable enough for the power we're handling here. Besides that, you guys have been giving me a bunch of good tips on the Macklin DRK recently. 
I'm excited to try some more of those out. I think I'm heading in the right direction, but some of y'all have given me some small little tips here and there that could help me improve even further. Unfortunately, we're back in the rain again, but hopefully by the weekend it may clear up and I'll be able to get out again. So let me know down in the comments below what you think of the new wheelie bar mount. I will have a link to it down in the description below. Let me know what diff oil you're running in your no prep car if you're running diff oil. And also give me your guesses down below. What speed and ET do you think will hit next time out? Until then, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. We're getting really close to that 10K subscriber mark. Yes, I am a little ways off still, but I'm really excited about getting there. Just one small accomplishment. I would have never thought this channel would have 10,000 subscribers. So thank you all so much. If you aren't subscribed yet, help me reach that goal. Maybe we can get it by the end of the year. If not, I'm confident you guys will help us get there. But anyway, as always, thanks again for watching. Peace.